Opposition leader Alexei Navalny returned to Russia amid a chaotic scrum of journalists after six months in Germany being treated for a near fatal poisoning. The attack was allegedly carried out by Russia's Federal Security Service. But while the Kremlin has denied involvement, the Russian authorities said they would arrest Navalny if he returned. He was defiant. But moments later, at passport control, Navalny was told he was being detained for questioning. There was time for a final kiss with his wife, Yulia, and then he was led away. Throughout the last decade, Navalny has drawn tens of thousands of people to his political rallies, including many young people disillusioned with widespread corruption in their country and President Vladimir Putin's 20 years in power. Focusing on Russia's oligarchs and political elite, the efforts of Navalny and his team to expose corruption at the highest levels have often made him a target. In 2017, he was sprayed with green antiseptic dye called Zalyonka that left chemical burns on one of his eyes. A lawyer by training, Navalny founded Russia's Anti-Corruption Foundation, which was often raided by police. He and his supporters produced documentaries that got millions of views on social media. In January last year, they published a report on Russia's new prime minister, Mikhail Mishustin, investigating the sources of his alleged massive wealth. We collected Dossier on Mishustin from 2015. Why? Because we always knew that he was a war and corruption. We have all the documents with all the families and all the evidence. And now we will tell you who the second person was in Russia. Months later, Navalny fell ill on a flight from Tomsk to Moscow. He was eventually evacuated for treatment in Germany, where doctors said he'd been poisoned with a Novichok nerve agent. Western nations said it was an attempt to murder him. The Bellingcat investigative team and several other Western media presented evidence that specific FSB agents had been trailing Navalny for years. Navalny made another YouTube video garnering millions of views. Я знаю, кто хотел меня убить. Я знаю, где они живут, я знаю, где они работают, я знаю их настоящие имена, я знаю их поддельные имена. У меня есть их фотографии. Navalny has already been jailed more than 10 times and spent more than 100 days in custody since 2011. The threat to re-arrest him on his return to Moscow relates to an embezzlement conviction from 2014, which Navalny says was politically motivated. Russia's prison service said Navalny had not met the terms of his suspended sentence, requiring him to report to a police station twice a month. He has pointed out that he was being treated in Germany. Те люди, которые сейчас обиделись на то, что они меня всё-таки не убили, и я выжил, и теперь угрожают меня посадить. Within half an hour of Navalny's detention, Amnesty International declared him a prisoner of conscience. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania immediately called fellow European Union members to impose restrictive measures against Russia. More international condemnation will surely follow. Navalny, meanwhile, could now face three and a half years in prison.